Lindell, who showed here uh, about five, six months ago, uh, did an artist talk that I, that I went to, and I really liked it. I mean, I really enjoyed what he had to say. He's an extremely insightful person, unlike me. Um, and, and he basically said that I should do this. So I, I thought about it. I thought, what have I got to say? I, well, I don't know what to say. And I started thinking about that. And I realized, well, sure, I've, I've, you know, I've been thinking more and more about the work that I do and, and um, in terms of selling it and uh, trying to promote it in different ways, which, which forces you to think about things. And I realized, sure, I mean, there's, um, I think if there's one word that describes what I want to go over, it's probably just an evolution of how how my ideas for what I what I photograph have, have changed over the years, and uh, and so I thought what I'd like to do is just talk a bit about that. And I I tend to get a lot of questions about the technical process I go through to make platinum prints, and, and I'm very happy to talk a bit about that as well. Um, so so that's that's what I'll go through, and um, and uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll I'll I'll talk through those things. I know um. I don't, if you want to ask questions while I'm thinking, go right ahead, I really don't mind. So, um, I mean, if people start asking lots of questions, maybe I'll get you to sort of save some until the end, but I, if, if I say something and you want to ask a question right away, just feel free. Um, I want this to be informal, so um, don't hesitate to ask anything. And once I'm done um, collaborating away, uh, you know, I'll sort of take any general questions you have as well. So, um, where to start? I, I guess... When I was looking at, at, at my work when I was putting the show together, I, I was, it kind of got my, my brain ticking about how, how my sort of vision, I guess, for what I want to photograph has changed over the years. And I, I started taking photographs literally, I mean, I started in grade six. So we, we got to make pinhole cameras out of shoe boxes, um, which was great. I mean, I didn't know any other grade six students that got to do that, but we put paper negatives in the back of the shoe box and we took a photograph and you know we had a little tiny room that they put some trays in so they could develop the paper. When that image came up, I was like I just thought it was it was absolute magic. I was amazed. And that it stuck with me. So I remember a year later, the summer after grade seven, I took my first summer job and worked um, somewhere, I almost forget what I did now. Uh, so I could save money to buy buy a camera. And so by grade eight I had my first little Olympus OM2 was my first uh, camera, which is you know, an SLR. And, and I was always drawn to taking photographs of, I, I want to say nature, the outdoors, the landscape, that sort of thing. Um, by that point, some friends and I had started doing outdoor activities, so that was what I photographed. What city were you living in? Or I grew up in Toronto. In? Okay. I grew up in Toronto. So were you living in an area with nature? No. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't too far by. Uh, there, um, there was places outside the city we used to go to. Um, and a place almost at the eastern border of Toronto was called the Rouge River Valley, which is a place that my friends and I used to go to on weekends and we went camping there and so forth. Um, and the camera certainly started coming with me. I didn't... I don't really think about the photographs I took as being, I want to say, relevant to what I do now until maybe 10 years ago. And it was at that time that I... I used to work for the provincial government, um, which I did for four years, and out of sheer frustration I decided to quit and become a photographer, which was, you know, a great thing to do for my mental well-being, but a bad thing for my financial well-being. Um, and, and at that time, I started thinking obviously more seriously about taking photographs, and when I did, I started looking at what I, I enjoy photographing, and it's always been the landscape, that's something I've always enjoyed photographing. But I now look at photographs that I took 10 years ago, and I essentially, as far as I'm concerned, they're, I want to call them junk. They're not junk, but I don't, it's not something I would show. I don't really like the way I photographed it back then. And because there has been an, evo an evolution in the way I look at the landscape around me. And, uh, and living here has also played a large role in that. I moved to Victoria in 1991, um, and, and I, you know, I, I haven't left because uh, I love it here. I mean, this is the, this is the, we live in the most beautiful place in the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and, and hopefully that's reflected in the photographs I take, because everything here in these walls has been taken um, somewhere on Vancouver Island. And I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, they're all taken in the local area. And I, and I, and I love the landscape which, in, in which we live, uh, and, and I'm deeply affected by it. Uh, I was really fortunate in that in the summer of 2002, uh, a good friend of mine, Tim Schaff, and I, uh, paddled our kayaks from Prince Rupert uh, down the coast of Victoria. So we took three months 
and paddled the west coast all the way down. We came down the west coast of the island, and and that was easily the most amazing three months of my life, um, and and also highly influential on me for for how I perceive this place in, in, in which I live, because seeing the entire coast and sort of immersing myself in it for that time was, was quite astounding. I mean, it, it changed me. I came, I came home and I was, I was disturbed. I mean, I really was. I was living in Vancouver at the time, and to go back to the city was, was wrong in so many levels after that. And, uh, and that also triggered why I moved back to the island here, because I couldn't stay there um, for the long term. But seeing the coast in that way, um, and spending that much time on it certainly shaped the vision I have for how I, uh, how I see it and how I experience it. And that's what I've tried to, to, to put into my photographs. And, you know, and in a show like this, and because I've decided to show two streams of my life, oops, um, both my landscapes and, and my nudes as well, there's you know, two different themes here, but they're both photographed within the same landscape. Um, and I think a lot, of, you know, a lot of what I feel about photographing the landscape itself applies to the nudes as well, because I was, I've, I've been interested in shooting nude for a long time, and quite frankly was never satisfied with what I was, was achieving until I could place the nude into this landscape. And so again, that's sort of the common thread throughout everything that I've done. <clears throat> when, I was, when I was on that kayak trip, I, uh, I actually stuffed my uh, 4x5 view camera into the kayak with me, and, uh, and, and took, uh, I got a small it's literally a tent, it's a film changing tent, it's light proof that I can load film holders and so forth. And, and, I, and I took photographs you know, the entire time, and quite frankly was disappointed at the end of the, uh, end of the summer because we saw these amazing places, places which in some cases I've returned to, and in other cases a lot. I, I haven't been back yet, but I will. Um, and it was difficult to, uh, to photograph. I, I found that the coastal landscape extremely difficult to capture in a way that, that to me reflects what I actually feel about what I'm seeing. And, um, and, and, and the good thing about that was that it inspired me to, to keep doing it. Like I wasn't disappointed that I didn't want to bother doing it anymore. But it made me really think, how, how do I see this landscape and how do I, how do I photograph it? And I believe really strongly in the idea of, I've you know, heard the description of being a hunter or a gatherer of photographs. And a lot of people go out and, and have with nothing in mind and go out and just gather what they can. And I like to think of myself as a hunter. I, I, I think, I, I believe straight, very strongly in pre-visualizing a photograph. So I'll go to places several times, uh, look at them, hopefully get to know them, see how the light works in a certain place, and then think of the photograph I want to take and then try and create that. And that's, that's what these are here, I mean, photographs that I've, I've planned out in some way. So do you work exclusively in black and white? I do. Okay. I do. I, I stopped shooting color for myself Probably about six, seven years ago. Just and do you use various filters? I almost use no filters. No filters. So you don't yeah. use a yellow filter to enhance the white cloud or something. Like Sometimes, that. Red but but filter. part of what's changed for me is that I don't shoot in direct sunlight anymore. Okay. Um, I, I used to when I uh, actually it was just four years ago. <clears throat> I did a trip down through the U.S. Southwest, and I I, I did a, a road trip, and I spent almost two months down there. And, it sort, of, sort of a little pilgrimage for me to kind of see these places of all these photographs I'd seen growing up from Ansel Adams and Edward Weston and, and other people in, you know, in Yosemite and, and the desert and that sort of thing. And uh, so I'm shooting in a lot of sunny areas and I definitely would use filters to darken the sky a bit. Um, but it's funny, I got really nice photographs in that trip. Uh, but it's of a place completely different from here and all those negatives are sitting in my filing cabinet and I've done nothing with them because it's not... Those places don't hold true meaning to me, I think, is what it is. So I'm not inspired to dig them out and do something with them. Maybe someday I will, but right now I don't, I don't really feel like it for some reason. I mean, this is the place that I, I feel a connection to the landscape around me, so I'm trying to explore how to interpret that, I guess. And initially, when I was photographing uh, the landscape in particular, I started out looking at photographs you know, by like Ansel Adams. That's what got me into photography when I was 12 years old, I think. You know, and that style of landscape photography is very, it's a very literal interpretation. It's, you know, um, known for, you know, extremely sharp photographs, uh, um, you, know, you know, beautiful tonal range and contrast and extremely, you know, well printed and so forth. But it was this, this very literal interpretation of what, what we're seeing. And so that's what I was doing. And I was f fine with that, but in looking back at photographs, then I realized something wasn't quite, didn't quite 
express what I really wanted to, I suppose. And what, what, what has come to me over the last few years, finally, has been the more time I spend on the coast. And, and when I talk about spending time on the coast, for me, it's I do try to take time where I kind of just roam around the island and, and take photographs and I might go for a few days and you know sleep in the backseat of my car sort of thing and, and shoot whatever I can. But for me, generally, it's, it's exploring the, the coastal landscape in my kayak. So I do a lot of sea kayaking. It's my favorite hobby. It's you know, one of the biggest reasons why I ended up moving to the island. And so I'm seeing places that are generally remote, um, you know, not, I'm not, I'm not photographing in the city, obviously. And, and those are places that inspire me. And I think what was affecting me most was those times when I call, I'm going to call them quiet times. Even though the coast can be a terrifying place, like last night would not have been a good time to be out kayaking, for example. And I've spent time out on the coast during storms like that which is absolutely amazing, but you also can't photograph in those times. Um, I'd, I'd like to find a way to, because it would be quite amazing, I think. But it's um, rather You're difficult. Your equipment. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, and salt water and camming gear just doesn't go well together, I find, so. Um, the, these pictures are on the wall, to me, look, you know, in a very nice way, complimentary way, very contrasting. When you print, do you have a sort of a narrower range of stops that you print between? Um, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't describe it as that. What I, what I, the way I shoot now is that I, I tend to shoot in. I don't shoot in sunlight anymore. It, it doesn't work for me. So I spend my days when I'm out looking around. I figure I'll, you know, try and figure out what I want to actually photograph. What, what inspires me. But the time of day that always affects me is dusk. So it's, it's the time when the sun is gone. Um, even on a cloudy day, I don't generally photograph midday. Um, it's, it's sort of at the end of the day when it's getting dark out, and I've got kind of a small window of maybe an hour usually, but that's, that's when I, I kind of go crazy with the camera and try and squeeze off as many frames as I can. So I'm shooting in a low contrast situation. And, uh, and one of the reasons why I really like shooting film still is that I can then develop my film to ensure that I have you know, a decent amount of contrast in the negative. And the way I work now, which I will explain, um, is that you know, I scan my negatives now. I don't do uh, darkroom silver prints anymore. Um, all my platinum prints are made from digital negatives. So I scan my film and I adjust the contrast uh, afterwards in Photoshop. But it allows me to adjust it to the way I want. So I don't say I have a sort of narrow range within that. I, um, I interpret the, the, the scene the way I want it to be. And sometimes it's, it's quite oh, contrasty. Oftentimes it's, it's, it's not, um, you know. So... <coughs> As, and as I went through this, I realized, you know, when, when I sit in a coastal area or at, at this time of day around dusk, you know, it's getting dark. And obviously, when you're shooting when it's getting dark, you can't use fast shutter speeds, especially um, if I'm shooting with a view camera, I certainly can't. And it lends itself to long exposures. Mm -hmm. So, and I'd seen, you know, over the, over the last 10 years of work of various people, I mean, Michael Levin, who's shown here, um, you know, does a lot of work with, with long exposures. Other people like um, uh, well-known American photographer Michael Kenna sort of was one of the pioneers of that sort of look where you, know, you have the seascapes where the water is all completely flat and the, you know, 10 minute exposures or, or longer, which I admit I really like. But to be perfectly blunt, at this point to me it's been overdone. And I, and I, don't, I didn't want to copy that particular style of photograph. But I thought, how do you do that in sort of a, in this wilderness setting? Uh, because that's what was that's what was appealing to me, was how to interpret that sort of that calmness I feel at that time of day. Um, and you know, and the, and the ultimate example I look at are those three images right there. Um, uh, two different locations. The middle shot is in Barclay Sand, which is just uh, south of Euclidean on the west coast of the island. And the other two shots are actually in the same place. I mean, almost taken from the same location. One with the camera pointing to my left and one with the camera pointing to my right. But taken all at the same time of day, uh, at dusk, the sun has actually gone down, uh, the light's getting quite low, the exposures are usually anywhere from 15 to 15 seconds to 2-3 minutes. I don't usually do really super long exposures, occasionally, um, but usually not more than 3-5 to five minutes. 